Bandits Coax in here. Remember that if you enjoyed this video, you should be a patron over on Patreon, and yeah, you'll get some cool, cool ass stuff. You'll get some cool ass stuff for it. So, welcome back, everybody. It's been a year, kind of. About a year. Yeah, about a year since we did one of these. These are our, like, big analysis video stuff. Our 40 minute long analysis video stuff. You know, you're in it for the long haul. That get 10,000 of you that enjoyed watching this when it, when it existed. Okay! So, I'm, I'm very glad to see you guys. Also, you guys should join our Discord server, and if you comment, I'll probably ask you to anyway. Um, I'm very hyped, and you guys should be hyped too and want to talk to Ruby fans who will be extra hyped. Uh, so anyway, we're gonna get right into things, aren't we, Hunter? Yes. You say that like you expect me not to, like... To be like, ah, no, we'll do yeah, it later. Good. I want to watch Riverdale! <laughs> You act like I have um, an interesting relationship with that television program. Anyways, Anyways. Uh, so I made notes, as usual, uh, so yes. we're just going to talk about it. In so, fact, until recently, you still kept some of the notes you had I of did. Volume 4. Just in case. You okay. never know. Uh, so Nora has a lot of like funny dialogue here. I'm She's glad that adorable. they kind of made her Samantha the comic Ireland relief of things. Is just a wonderful voice actor. I feel like that fits her very well, and like sometimes like Jean's comedy comes off as a bit annoying, and so I'm glad. John, I'm glad that um annoying. Yeah, I'm glad that we did things this way. It was a good idea. It was a good idea. Um, and so like especially her like this didn't go exactly as planned like that kind of stuff. Like I thought that was funny. I liked it. I enjoyed it. Um, Ren moving downs people. What does this say? I well, can't even read. Them. Moving, Ren. No, non, non-moving townspeople, okay. Yes, so you could have <laughs> uh, just said drawn uh, townspeople. Okay, sorry, I apologize. I couldn't read my own handwriting for a minute. Um, so a lot of people are salty that they uh, went all out for, somebody posted on my Yang trailer anyway, that people were kind of salty that they spent all that money redoing the costumes for Ruby and Yang for the Yang trailer, but they couldn't bother to animate the people of, uh, the people of Mistral. Like, they just couldn't be asked to do it. Which is I kind weird. of get it, though, because they were overhead, right? And so looking down at them and having them walk around may have been strange. You wouldn't have been able to see their faces as well, but, like, it was still kind of odd. It was World of Remnant-E to have it 2D. Yeah. Um, and so, I, I personally didn't have a problem with that because we saw a lot of cool stuff I think we wouldn't have seen if it was an overhead shot. Like the gay... Okay, hold on. Uh, but at the same time, they could have done, like, a pan shot of the crowd the exact same way that they did it, you know what I mean? And then just had it 3D. Does that make sense? They could have yeah. done it the exact same way, but drawn it, and we would have been like, well, they're looking up, like, from the elevator, so they can't be see that perspective. Like, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't fucking matter. So it's fine. Um, so yeah, like, some people were salty about that. I personally, I, it was kind of refreshing, but at the same time, I'm like, RT, you got the budget. Like, just draw the fucking townspeople, okay? I mean, I still thought it looked nice. It did nice. look very nice. Um, so now, as Hunter was getting to, <laughs> there were two guys holding onto a heart-shaped plant. That was just a like a heart-shaped bamboo. A heart-shaped so cactus. Here's your queer... It looked like a cactus to me, but whatever. Wah wah, bumblebee. Here's your fucking queer representation. Hunter's just joking, by the way. We're both I'm very not. gay. Um, anyways, um, yeah, I appreciated that because, like, you know, they didn't. Nobody made a big deal out of it. It was just kind of normal, you know. There's two guys like sharing a fucking bamboo plant. You know what do you want from me? You know what I mean? And that's what I want most. I don't want people kind of to make a big deal out of things like that. Like, character-wise, anyway. Like, I just want it to be there and, like, have it be normalized. Have it, have it be- having it be normal, I think, is also- Yeah, have it be matter. normal is, like, definitely what I enjoy them going for. And also, for. I'm disappointed that a romantic partner of mine has never given me- A bamboo plant? A bamboo heart. I'm pretty sure it's a fucking cactus, okay? But whatever. Well, cacti don't look like that. Yeah. Sure. It looked like more of a cactus to me, but whatever. I don't know also, how I just on that, like it's it's in fallen. It says Huntress has fallen, not failed. Well, uh, it's kind of weird that we're suddenly, like you know, Mistral is supposed to be a combination of Greek like stuff and then uh, like uh, East Asian. They've said, and uh, meanwhile. Um, it's the wild, wild west out here <laughs> with, yeah. like, the cactus and the shop guy, but I, I'll come back to that later. Also, they had really unique hairstyles, and I feel like that kind of captures the upper fashion-y stuff of Mistral. 
I feel like that was really nice. I really liked how some of the hairstyles were done. Like, I wish I could wear my hair like that. I'm growing it out, guys. Don't worry. It's fine. <laughs> I'm working on it. You guys can't see me, but if you watched uh, our other reaction. Um, anyway, there was an actual drawn child in the villager shot, and I feel like that's important. Like, I feel like, uh, for Ruby, we haven't seen an actual kid. Like, this was a little, like, a literal like toddler. Like an infant. I yeah. Say. Not yeah. an infant. It was, like, a uh, less, uh, like, a four-year-old kid. Like a toddler. So yeah, yeah, basically a toddler, and I appreciated that. That's mm -hmm. all I wanted to say. I thought that was nice that we actually see that kids oh, exist. Kids you kids. know? Because all we've seen are teenagers and then old people. Like, we haven't seen anything in between that, I mean, you know? We have, we have spent most of this show in, like, Like, a... we did see young Yang, but, like, that was You saw, it, still... like, little... You know, uh, you know what I mean. Nora, little Ren, little. Oh, Ren. that's true. But uh, this was like an actual like. Although you child, also spend, child, you know you what I mean. You also spend most of your time in places where they yeah. tend not to be little children. Yeah, but so this was like Ren and Nora were old enough to kind of understand what was going on. Like this child looked like he, you know, probably couldn't talk yet. Sort yeah. of situation. Like I would peg Nora and Ren at that time to be like eight or ten. But this kid looked like he was four. Or something. Just, just to clarify, that's kind of what I mean. Um, uh, I liked the two, like, witches uh, doing some back alley trading. Like, yeah. it looked like they were, like, hooded wicked and hooded and, and, like, they had really cool costumes. Like, good job, RT. Um, why did I put the gay plant boys twice? I put it up there and then I put it down there again. Okay. The name's so nice, we put it twice. I know. You know, it's just... On to some uh, more serious business, though. Weiss's scene was very impactful for me. Like, yes. I, I felt pretty sad almost get, immediately. Because I thought it was going to be... I mean, I guess it does really bounce to all four of the girls, which is very different to them how they did it in Volume 4. How And in the first uh, episode, it was just all uh, uh, Team uh, Runiper. Runiper? <laughs> and... <laughs> Is that what we're calling yes, them? Okay. I, guess. I don't know. Ruby and the uh, the the group formerly known as Juniper, and then at the very end you get a little taste of Weiss, and then next was Weiss. A Central. little taste of Weiss. Now Weiss. you get the idea that they're sort of converging. Yes, I agree with you. I was unsure of where you were going with that. Now I kind of understand what you mean. Yes, they are converging, basically, <laughs> just as you said. Um. Yeah, so it was pretty sad, especially, like, how, like, Kara did some, like, high-level voice acting. She's actually, like, she's my favorite now, like, kind of, like... After we met her Just at, after we met her at Fan Expo, she like, was she, she was really nice, lovely. she liked my tiara, you she know, I kind of have a personal connection to Rainy, her. Raina Scully was in it briefly, she played a character that was in the background. Yes. Oh, no, she played the Mistral, like, pilot yeah. getting to Mayday, which was yeah. in the scene. Um, and, like, especially how she said, like, but they'll die, like... Yeah, you know so, what I mean? Like, that hurt so That hurt me yeah. a lot. The scene, as it was set up, was... Uh, they're gonna go help them. You know that they are. So Like, Weiss is gonna start driving the airship, or at least, like, put a gun to that guy's head and be like, Listen, you fuck. Okay, we're gonna go help them, okay? Because this ship may not be equipped, but I'm equipped. You know what I mean? Like, I'm pretty sure that's what ha what's happening. I don't think that they'd be getting attacked by themselves, Ooh. if that makes sense. Oh! Oh! oh I just got her, though. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, All you right. shouldn't do that. Um, yeah, well, I think sorry. I um, yeah, people thought that we don't record the gameplay in real time. We do. No, we do. Um, <laughs> sorry, what was I saying? Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure they are gonna go help them. Like, I, unless they get attacked themselves. Which, I mean, Weiss's negativity of not being able to help could have brought more grim, but you know what I'm saying. Like, they're gonna assume, go help them. I'm, you assume that they're because of With the night, and then, yeah. The like, I'm almost 10,000% sure they're gonna go help them. If they don't, like, that'll have... I mean, it's good either way. It's good if they help them, because then uh, we'll kind of... I don't know how to explain. Like, see it... I guess, like, we'll see that Weiss's determination is very strong, uh, but if they don't, like, either way, it'll leave a lasting emotional impact, and I feel like that's the best, like, sort of scene where it could go either way and still play with the audience's emotions. Like, I feel like, from a writing perspective, that's, that's cool. That's good. And, and your catch You understand what I mean, though, right? That if they didn't go help them and then they uh, got attacked themselves, I feel like we'd still feel the same pain, uh, like, a different, a different pain, but we'd still feel some pain. You know? Yes, and I also especially like that you get the idea of Weiss is more considering, is is, is acting in a more moral way now. Yeah. So 
you almost got the impression that the guy was also like, you're a fucking schnee, like, aren't you like the cunning, cruel, don't care about other people capitalist? Why do you care all of a sudden? Yeah, time? that's kind of, I, I got that vibe too, and he was yeah, also especially like, especially when she was uh, like, I hope you, I'm not you a and burden. Your, you and your money is welcome on yeah. this place. She was like, so you got the extent that she's dealing with like, okay, so she's used to people like, people liking me because I'm white, but now she's back to people now she's liking not, me. Yeah just because I have money, and so I think, like, that realization... Also, there was a very important. sad Mirror Mirror remix. It, it was either Mirror Mirror or Path of Isolation. It was just one of the white songs being, um... I don't want to say remix, because remix is like, r -r 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 remix Like, no, it wasn't like that. It was just... Wiggity, 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 wiggity. It was just like the... <laughs> <laughs> it was just the Weiss chords, if that makes sense. Like, the chords for the, um, song. Mm -hmm. Um, to, to be technical about it. Lionheart has a great voice. I didn't like his look too much when I saw it in the trailer, but I'm getting used to it. I'm, I'm okay with it now. You get the idea that he's kind of cowardly? You know, I, 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 cowardly think, lion, I, 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 I think the problem with me was is that I thought that he was wearing a headdress, and so I imagined him with kitty ears and a headdress. Uh, if you're but not in my Discord phonic, server, yeah. As not we well. He thought. may have a tail, um, but I I uh, mentioned this in my Discord server. I thought that the shoulder shot that we saw, uh, Watts looking down at uh, Lionheart was a headshot, and so I thought that his shoulder, like that white bit, was the ear, and then the brown part was his head because mm -hmm. you see how his shirt kind of leaves his shoulder exposed only, and the way that it was, it was almost a triangle shape, and I was very yeah. upset. Yeah. <laughs> I was very upset that he's not like the pinnacle of high mistral fashion. No. It was very sad. But also, I love that scene for for ultimately because we can discuss like the in, the, the, the topics discussed because there's a lot of interesting. Yeah, I have discussed. I have notes. Don't worry. But over you get this idea that he's just not prepared and he's giving excuses. Well, we know after that Watts that is listening in Watts, and he's like, so you're he's under he's your under skills aren't that. But nervous. for the entirety of the scene, you're like, is this guy good? Is this guy bad? What's yeah. his angle? And eventually, his angle is revealed. But and now, I think ultimately, that made the scene the scene. Pretty now I feel like, I don't want to say I understand, but now I feel like everything he said in that scene makes more sense when you know that Watts was listening, right? Yeah. He was trying to make excuses on purpose. It's not that he's incompetent. He knows exactly what he's doing, but he has to do it because Watts is and there. And you wonder exactly And that layers why. his character, right? Because yeah. there's one thing about a character just being stupid, right? And he's cowardly, Allah, so he's yeah. cowardly lying, really. But I'm saying that... It's he not that he's stupid, more. but he was putting on a show for Watts. Yes. And in a sense, he was putting on the show for Watts, but also putting on a show for Crow. But also, and that makes him very I, late. I don't think he was putting on a show, because afterwards, Watts was like, you need to work on your... Well, so you get the impression he was that Watts doing, was like, He was doing a bad improv he was show doing instead his, of a good improv yeah. show. He was doing his best. He's you kind know? of a fuck-up. But you understand what I mean, right? Like, it wasn't a great show, but he was still trying to put on a show, you know what I mean? It was a show. It was a show, let's just put it that way. Um, I also, okay, so I was very happy that I was correct. Um, nobody's ever happy when they're wrong, so I guess Hunter was right. He said that, uh, during our reaction. <laughs> um, but I had the theory for the longest time that the Spring Maidens would connect that way. If you guys remember, I did a video on how the girls embodied the traits of the relics. Uh, but in separate videos, um, I don't remember which one. Uh, but in separate videos, I've also talked about how the relics, um, also represent the Maidens. And so my idea... Um, my idea before was that winter would be, uh, destruction, because in winter stuff gets cold and it dies, mm -hmm. um, and that, um... It was summer, ultimately. Yeah, that was summer destruction. is destruction, which is and very which interesting. Which was odd, because when you think of summer, you think of spring, maybe hot. I don't know, winter was knowledge, which I found no, interesting. No, winter is creation, spring is knowledge. Really? No, Yeah, I, I corrected swear. you when I got it. Remember when you were lying on the floor? I said, hey, Hunter, no, it's spring is knowledge. Oh, I thought it was winter. Because he started okay. with winter. He said winter is creation, summer is destruction. Why would winter be creation? Winter is when everything fucking dies. No, but I think that, I think the point is, is that when things die, like, they begin rebirthed almost. Right. Like, I think that's kind of the that's idea. That's more given to spring. I don't okay. know, but I, I double-checked because I wanted to make sure that what I heard wasn't conflicting with what you heard, but I guess... Maybe I'll just check one more time right. later, uh, but I'm pretty sure that's what they said because they ended with spring because she's the one that they're looking for, right? Yes. And so spring and knowledge, that was the last one. Um, and so, um, 
I feel like that that's very interesting, and I'm glad that I was correct. That's all I wanted to say. Especially because the Maidens were a last-minute addition, right? Monty hadn't originally planned for them, but somewhere in between Volume 2 and, and Volume 3, he decided to have them. And so I feel like if Miles made this up, or if Monty decided this was a good bridging point, it makes a lot of sense. I think it, it I doesn't think, yeah. like sound like a convoluted bridge in order to fix a mistake. If that makes sense, like it doesn't, it's not putting a band aid over anything, I no, guess. Like all. it's a very natural bridge and it makes a lot of sense, and I'm very appreciative of how they've done it this way. Um, so there's that. Um, I like how Blake has some guards now, like her dad definitely uh, like, knew yeah, better, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? And so she's um, planning on, so. Whoa. I wanted to talk about that. I like, I love Blake and Ilya's interactions. I don't just like it, I love them. Um, oh, love I was it. actually had something to say before that. I really uh, liked the Gira and the Sun scene, actually. Yeah. Like, that was the first time I was like, oh wow, like, that was cute. But what, what did they get back it. from, exactly? Um, they were trying to process, they were basically trying to arrest Corsic and the other one yeah. for the stuff that was on Ilya's phone, and they couldn't do it, because remember how Blake says yeah. that, that they didn't have enough to charge them? So um, what, they're, what they're trying to do is now they're going to go public with it, and then yes. Ilya says that won't work out. Ba so basically, like they're gonna they're gonna try gonna to be. like I guess have the Faunus there riot and then cast out Corsic and Finn yeah. and uh, Fergus as we affectionately called Fergus. him because we don't remember his name. <laughs> um, which sound makes him sound like a muppet, which is yes. the best. But. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think that that's interesting to see if there is a sort of. Like, a democracy is in a vote system, maybe? Like, that there is sort of a government where you can arrest people if you have enough evidence, but at the same time, I think it would also be interesting. Remember in Walking Dead where they vote about, um... Killing the kid? I think it's about killing the kid. Not about that. It was something else that, like, they're all by the campfire. Oh, they're voting about whether to keep Rick or not. Like, in that society where, like, it was solar-powered and stuff. Right. Do you remember what yeah. I'm talking about? And they were having a town vote. Alexandria. Like I would, yeah, I would like to see if it kind of works the same way there, where the Faunus could basically just cast out Corsic and Finn um, if they felt like it. Mm -hmm. Corsic and Fergus. Fergus. I'm disappointed. I don't think his name is even Finn, by the way. Like I'm pretty sure that's not right. I would listen, right? His also, name is Fergus now. I have something else that I'd like to say that I thought was interesting. That Ilya said. I need to talk, not we need to talk, because that's kind of the more natural, like, uh, you know, we need to talk, Hunter. Like, that is, like, a dialogue <laughs> back and forth, but she said, I need to talk. Not that she needed to talk to Blake, that Blake needed to shut up and Ilya was gonna talk to her and basically Blake was gonna listen, right? That Ilya in that line, I feel, conveyed that there was not gonna be a two-way conversation here. Ilya just had to say that Blake's plan wouldn't work. Please don't do that. It's stupid. Like, and so I feel like that shows us a lot about Ilya's character. That may have not even been intentional, but from like a, from a, writing, writing, perspective. From a writing perspective, that lot, like You're even in that back. line, you know what I mean? Even, there's a lot of power just in that line that I need to talk. Like, I don't care what you have to say, I need to talk to you. Like, you know what I mean? That there's no, there's no communication, like, there's no back and forth dialogue here, Blake. I need to talk to you, you know what I mean? Like, I, I'm pretty sure you guys get it now, I'm done. <laughs> um, Jean, uh, really wants revenge on Cinder, like, you yeah. can kind of see that, and he then Penny also- has moment of, like, Penny. pure. Yeah, and sure. then Ruby also has uh, that reaction to Penny, like, we saw that poor girl get ripped to shreds, and we Ooh, saw that reaction yeah, from yeah. Uh, Ruby, but then we also saw a reaction to Jean, because Pyrrha did that, and everybody kind of thinks that Pyrrha is this monster, probably, right? Yeah. Because they didn't know the whole story, Which right? sucks, because of course, if you know Pyrrha, she's- Yeah, she's I was thinking about that, so Pyrrha's parents- probably oh, yeah. think their daughter is a fucking monster because we've talked a lot like oh they should go visit the parents to tell like them that pure is dead Pyrrha's parents may not even give a shit at this point like they saw their daughter rip a girl apart on live television you know what i mean like they're probably very ashamed especially if they're from mistral right because we know that like there's like i don't know how to put this that like in also, a lot of east asian cultures there's this idea of being like Shameful. She was you know a what, you know I mean, what I mean? And she was a celebrity time. too. That would that's right? the, that she kind of Bill Cosby. It was like fuck. I was a fan of her until she murdered that girl. Yeah, like a little OJ. Yeah, she OJ. Yeah. You know? Um, and so like in that regard, I've never thought about that before, and I think we should do a separate video on that, like exploring the impact 
of Pyrrha's death on Mistral. Because I've never actually thought about that before. I just thought about that right now. Like, oh shit. Like, they, they don't know that Pyrrha's innocent and that Penny wasn't a real person. <laughs> I guess, I don't know. Penny was real in here. So maidens can only use the relics, great. Um, so Spring got stressed and ran away, basically. That's kind of what yes, happened to her. Yes, and we see Spring in the end of yes. the- Yes, the... but what I was gonna say is, is I feel like with that, there's also a comparison to Oscar, and yes. I feel like that is that... sort of a- I don't want to say foreshadowing, and it's not exactly ir irony either, but it's a- like, it's a connection, right? Mm -hmm. That, um... Oscar is now in the position where he could easily get overstressed and run away as well. Yeah, so and so there's that, that comparison here, and you want to see the foils between the young girl that ran away from her responsibilities and then Oscar who's accepting it. You know what I mean? Like, that's a very interesting comparison, a nice little foil. Um, how many more times do I have to say foil, Hunter? You know uh, what I mean? Uh, but yeah. So there's definitely that, for sure. For sure, for sure. Um, Leonhard is stalling because of Watts. I really like Watts' personality. Like, he's very theatrical, and to me, he, like, reads as a theater... A the eh! He a theater reads theater. as a theater major, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. your improvisation skills could use some work. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's my best, like, accent for him. Um, but yeah, his, Brit his British accent kind of makes it better, or I guess it's like... He reminds me of Scar from The Lion King. You know what I mean? Like, that sort of sarcastic attitude. A sarcastic and, and a like, feminine. And, like, how... Not a feminine. <laughs> well, I mean, that's Scar. Scar wasn't that. a feminine. Yeah, it was. Not really. Yeah. He's literally... Um, yeah. No. Anyways, um, but, like, in Lion King, for example, Simba's like, I'm king, and then, uh, or something. And then, uh, young Simba, I should say, and then Scar's like, well, if you're king, then I must be a monkey's uncle, you know what I mean? And he doesn't really get, like, there's not the connection there with Simba, and it's kind of the same sort of, like, little jokey thing. I, I like it. I'm, I'm, anyways, uh, so that creepy guy, I'm glad that he got punched. Yeah. Also, it's just kind of poor timing, because of all the sexual assault allegations, like, going around, uh, like, uh, with like Hollywood Harvey, and uh, stuff. Harvey Weinstein. Yeah, I Hopefully mean, obviously, no... there was no intention to do that, because they made this six if months anything, ago. If anything, they're just like, yeah, fuck you, Harvey Weinstein. I think, yeah. if anything, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's almost supportive. timely. Yeah it, yeah, it is, but I'm saying it was entirely accidental, and they may have been like, oh, shit. Oh, well. Like, but, you know... Y Yang punching him is Imagine like, if okay. someone dressed up as Yang and assaulted Harvey Weinstein. It'd be fucking hilarious. Okay. Anyway. Thanks for that. <laughs> uh, Somebody do that. Some cosplayer that can, like, has a good, like, right hook. Well, I mean, it'll have to be a cosplayer in another country, because I'm pretty sure he's gonna leave. Yep. He's fine. Uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, so that creepy guy got shown who's boss, but... I did mention this in our Patreon video, um, like our talking about the trailer, um, but I was talking with uh, the people in Murder of Birds' server, uh, and we were talking about how the bandit is wearing the same gloves as Raven's bandits that we see in the trailer, and so we kind of decided that that guy was definitely a bandit, and now it looks like that we were correct, and I love that. I like when we're right. And we mentioned I'm so that, glad. We mentioned <laughs> that uh, Raven was... Uh, Raven is who... Um, uh, Raven has a spring name. Raven has a spring name. Thank you yes. for saving me there. You're, You're welcome. Nice um, and, and so, that, yeah, and I that, appreciate the, that creepy guy. Her clan is this. incredibly powerful, and it was at the dragon continent. Right? And I like how it's the Branwyn clan, clan, so you kind of understand that they're... It's not just... Because a lot of people thought that maybe Raven... Um, stole the power from the original person that was carrying the tribe, does that make sense? Like, say, like, 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 Hunter, like, it was the Hunter clan, and then Raven took it, and now the Hunter clan is being, like, taken over by Raven Branwyn, but when you say Branwyn, that's, like, a dynasty. Like, it seems like that this is, like, a, a dynasty-type name. This name has history. It's always been the Branwyn tribe. You know what I mean? And it's so, it, it seems to me like Raven just kind of replaced her parents, or whoever was in charge. Um, of the tribe. I don't think that she, like, stole- She could have stole it from her parents, but I'm saying that she just didn't take over some random tribe. And a lot of people were like, 
oh, Crow and Raven are orphans or something, you know, because they got picked up by the tribe, and then because Crow says, oh, but they were murderers and thieves, but now it's the Branwyn tribe, right? And so that to me, like, they could have renamed it, I guess, but it seems to me like there's a family they, yes, history They implied here. that it was always the Branwyn. Yeah, th that's so what maybe I'm that, saying. Maybe you get to see, learn about, like, Crow's And so and I don't like think that... What if Yang meets her grandma? That'd be fucking great. <laughs> that's what I'm saying, though. I don't think that... Because a lot of people were like, Crow and Raven are orphans. They were just picked up by the tribe. No, like, they were definitely... They're descendants of the people that started the tribe. I'm pretty sure that's 100% now. And that's kind of also probably why they have the bird power, right? Because they are descendants of... And that's why, like, the tribe matters so much. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Because I was going to further clarify, but I think you should stop me from rambling when I've already clearly made my point. Um, and so I, I think that you guys understand. They're definitely not orphans. It is definitely, like, a dynasty, and I appreciate it. I like how whenever I like something, I'm like, I appreciate that. RT did this just for me. <laughs> he, he, they didn't. Um, I love the shop guy's accent. Like, now Missy. Like, how he said, nah, Missy. He like, was whatever like, you said. Walk to Disney. It was fucking great. I know. Um, I put the mute, that music stopped. So I think that the music stopped at one point. Um, when she punched the dude? I, I don't think it was when she punched him. I think I it may have been when she. Oh, guys, I, but... I know why. It was because. Uh, she said, like, they both said Raven Branwyn at the same time, and everything just stopped, and he was like, Now, Missy, you don't want to go messing with no bandits. There are lots of trouble. And she was like, So I hear. Because Ty obviously told her that her mom's a bundle of trouble, right? And that could also be referring to that dude, dude in a kind of an afterthought sense that he is also a bandit and he is loads of trouble as well, you know I what I mean? I wonder if the divorce settlement, uh, Raven was like, and you can't belittle my, uh, roving band of mercenaries in front of the children. I know. Okay, also, Yang flipped her hair before getting onto the motorcycle. I feel like that was good. And I like how she was just like, seriously, you're not done yet, but he was just gonna be like, no, I just know where your mom is, it's okay. You know what I mean? Like, he must know that they're related now. That she has glowing fucking red eyes. Like, he must have figured, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so that's interesting. Uh, so Ruby obviously wanted some time alone from Juniper, and she wasn't getting it, because all of Juniper was in the same room, but Ruby was separate, reading her comic somewhere. And I feel like that's kind of indicative of how much time Juniper spent with, uh, Team Ruby, you know what I mean? Like, they're probably, like, Ruby's probably kind of sick of them. Like, no, uh, that's not to say anything bad about Ren or Jean or Nora, like, I'm sure they're great. Uh, but <laughs> I think, I think that, like, when you spend literally six months with the same three people, you must run out of things to talk about. You know Probably. what I mean? Like, if Hunter and I were trapped in a room, even if we were trapped outside for six months, just us would, in the middle I, of nowhere. They would have a lot to talk about. They seem to have a very adventurous last couple weeks. But, like, but you hey, know what I mean? Like, remember when we met she that must person, be getting sick of them, right? That 14-year-old like, child that Hunter, had the mind just, of our... Just Hunter. Like, imagine, um, imagine, like, having to spend six months with me in the woods, okay? Like, with no, no cell phone, like, no, no food, like, no water, we gotta figure out all that shit well, ourselves. Well, you and two other people. Uh, okay, but we don't have two other people, so you're just gonna <laughs> have to chill. But wouldn't you go crazy, especially because I have no survival skills? Like, wouldn't you lose your fucking mind? That's the point I'm trying to make. But, uh, Jean's useful, because he's been camping, apparently, and so that'll, that'll help. Um... Also, I like, uh, that, uh, Ruby, or Nora was the first one to defend Ruby. Like, Nora's been very protective of Ruby these Nora's past two volumes. And I feel like it's kind of because, uh, Pura died, and so now she kind of sees- I don't want to say she I sees Ruby- I need female friends! I don't want to say she sees Ruby as a replacement of Pura, but she did kind of like lose loser, you know what I mean? And so she's probably trying to fill that void with, uh, with Ruby a little bit, like- right? That's kind of sad, you know? Crazy. Anyways. Uh, so, uh, I wrote down Crow went full on Rick. Uh, so there was she, a lot of Rick and Morty vibes. Drunk. But Glinda said he's always drunk, so how shit fa- Like, you know what I mean? Something, sorry, something that I just wanted to bring up is that previous, oh, okay. like, when, when Yang ran away at the, near the end of Volume 4, it Yang? was like, are you gonna see 
uh, Ruby, Ruby, or are you going to see Raven? And she chose Raven. Yeah. Appears, we we I thought she was going to Ruby, but then... No, it was Raven. I, yeah. At first, I thought it was... Oh, it's Blake. Yeah. It was, no, no. <laughs> no, it's not Blake. It's not I should have known, though, because going to Ruby was too... Um, easy. Also, easy. maybe... Also, because she said, like, well, she said you're gonna be in so much trouble when I find you. Like that seemed like a little like something to say to your sibling. You know what I mean? Like, I guess it would work for. It like, would work for anyone. Really. I guess, but like the way she said Ruby. it, it was like I have two young cousins, and so like for example, if I was like Gracie, you're gonna be in so much trouble when I find you. Like that sounds like something almost condescending that you'd say to a little kid, and so it was a total fake out. Like it was a complete another fake out I on Gracie's yeah, part. Think, they did that on purpose. Like, you know, because it well, sounds I like think a it's sisterly also, thing. I think it also tells a lot about uh, Yang. Yeah, she's kind of um, joking about it almost, you know? Not only that, but it's like just the whole idea of her going after um, her mother. It's like, yeah, also, I, it's I love how Crow so happy. Oh, that's why Crow shit-faced, I think. Yeah, he, he was so happy that he found Ozpin that he decided he, just, he can take a break. That whole scene was hilarious. He was like, hello. I am an Oscar, but that you probably know that it. Wait for it, wait for it! And it was just that reminded so me of you when you got drunk. Like, Crow was a bit better than you, if that <laughs> puts things in perspective. Um, there was a bad luck charm almost. I don't want to say it was on an accordion, but it was on a similar ish, like, instrument, like a peppy instrument, I guess, when Crow was uh, doing the drunk scene. I, I appreciate when they use the music like that. Uh, and then John being closest to Ozpin is making me worried for the next episode, because John is literally right beside Oscar. Like, he's the closest one to him, and so if, uh, John decides to get a jump on him, like... Do you worry that John's yeah. gonna murder Oscar? Yeah, a little. And his sword is hanging on the wall, right beside him, too. Like, everybody else's weapons seem to be gone, but John's sword is right there beside John, you know? Um, so the OP was great. The opening was amazing. The song was like, eh, her voice we have to changed listen to the, the We have to listen to the song again, I think. Her voice, I felt, was deeper. Uh, if you will. Well, well, again, we'll have to listen. Okay. Uh, but, so, we talked about this in the Murder of Bird server as well, and in my own Discord, uh, we kind of talked about, like, whether that thing was the Tentacle Grim, but a more advanced Tentacle Grim, because we saw on the Seer, uh, Tentacle Grim, that, um, it didn't have those spikes, and so a lot of us thought that it either, like, no guys, we're wrong, go home, or it was a more evolved version, kind of how, like, the more evolved the Grim is, the more, like, plates and armor and stuff it has on. So it's almost like, like, there's Seer Grim version 1, and this is Seer Grim version 2. We, we know that because of all the arms, I guess, on, yeah, now we see more than that one tentacle. Um, I really like the fishing town that Blake and Sun were in. Yeah, at the beginning you see it. No, at the at the beginning, at the or, yeah, the, the, the beginning of the OP, OP I guess, right? Um, that was really cool. I liked it. Um, the opening was that. It reminded me. There's lots of towns like that, like that are on the water similarly, but it reminds me that there's this uh, tribe somewhere and they like fish and stuff, but they can hold their breath for like an insanely cool amount of time, and they can open their eyes in the salt water and stuff, and like their eyes have like a protective layer or something. I read about it a while ago. Cause, like they've just evolved by the water so much that they have natural protections i guess against it i don't remember what it was but it was going around online a while ago so you know it's cool um cinder was smiling while spring was frowning and yes, i thought and that we was got to see spring maiden she yes. looks great she looks so good <laughs> yeah oh my god i know i, I like so. it i like I it so. I like raven and this person please down just like you can't have hair like that no. Also, we didn't see Sienna in no, we didn't in see the Sienna OP, which is sad. Uh, well, but we'll, we'll, like, we are well, going to see, see her in that. Adam and Ad and they also put Adam and Hazel together. I know. Which maybe well, like maybe I, they're I, both bonus. Well, Hazel went to go talk to Sienna, right? Yeah. Because Hazel is trying to convince Sienna still to um to make sure everything goes as planned with Adam, right? And we see Adam trying to appeal to her. Yeah. in the trailer. I think that they did include Sienna just so they could keep the surprise. Yes. You know what I mean? They mm -hmm. don't want to reveal all their main characters. The only character we didn't know what they looked like there was Spring, and I feel like that was a good choice. So I feel like it's not that Sienna's not important. They just didn't want to... They just didn't want to spoil it, you know? Um, and then... So, with that... Uh, like Cinder smiling and then Spring frowning. I looked again at the scene and then Raven is smiling and Yang is frowning right after because you see that they're in the same place and so yeah. it's like Spring and Cinder. Then it's Yang and Raven. 
Um, so we talked about this in the Discord server, but there is a a tomb, I guess, that not a tomb. It's like a shrine almost that Ilya that is, Yeah, opening. that we see Ilya. Um and so it kind of makes sense now why Corsic and Fergus are wearing those hoods because it seems like the either a god or the person that she is trying to get advice from. Like, it, it could be a variety of things. If it's a god, um, we talked about this in my Discord server briefly, but it would be more interesting if, like, if we see... If it was see... some sort of Faunus central, central No. God. That's what I feel that's like. Not, that's not what I meant. Well, that's uh, what I'm I thinking. mean that it'd be more interesting if the light and the dark god are the only ones that exist and every other god was made up just to cope. Like, with the threat of the Grim. If that makes sense, because we have no information on the gods of light and darkness, like, going and fucking around and making more. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, this isn't your Greek history class, okay? Like, um, the Greek gods aren't, are probably a good example, I should say. Not, aren't a good example. They are a good example of what I don't want to happen. Like, I don't want there to just be gods for everything, right? I think that the light and the dark god are enough, and that I think that it would be more interesting, like, from a character perspective, to see what people made in time when times were hard and stuff in order to have something to believe in like to get out of the power of the like to kind of escape the negativity of the grim you know what i mean does that make sense sure. and so i feel like that would be more interesting than suddenly there's a god for everything like i feel like that's kind of dumb i would not like to them to go in that direction <laughs> just because like um i don't know like it's just it'd be weird i don't like it so i think that it's either like, because I, I, even Crow says, like, there were a lot of religions back in the day, and most people don't believe in them anymore. But there's only one of those stories that I know to be true. That's what he says, right? And exactly, so it's yeah. possible that all, everything else everybody else is worshipping is not true, and it was just kind of something that they made in order to cope with life. And I think that's more interesting uh, then, no, every god is real, everybody's fine, like, you know what I mean? Um, and you get that even in real world religions, like, not all of them can be true. Like, they, obviously. a lot of them contradict each other, and so, obviously, that can't happen, you know what I mean? Uh, and so, I, I think yeah. that it would be more interesting for everybody to have made religions that contradict each other, much like our world, instead of, like, no, you're god, you get a god, and you get a god, and you get a god. Like, everybody just has god. Most people don't bring up how gods contradict each other at this point. What do you mean? People just sort of, like, eh, fucking whatever. They, they Like, at this point thing. in, like, in our human, human history. history. Yeah. Yes. Um, and so, I feel like it would be better instead of, like, no, like, all of these gods are real. None of them are fake. Like, it would be interesting to have some like fake ones in there you know like i don't know Anyways. um and it could also be a uh like an um a person that she I, could be praying to i like well. the idea of it was like a fun centrist god or it was i don't want that like... to be real though i don't have a problem with that but i feel like like ooh, the 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 funnest have a nature god ooh, like that's stupid to me i hate that Whoa, like what? i just hate that like the idea that like the faunus need to have some kind of animal god to pray to or something well fuck it we make our gods me. look human why wouldn't a faunus make their no god but that's look not faunus. what i mean like ooh, like this this is a nature god and it's all about nature and plants nature and God, animal. I, just said I know faunus. not you, but I'm saying that other people have brought that up that it's gonna be some wild god, and I don't like that. Like, I don't like that. You know, there's enough of like the, like, ooh, like the animal creatures in this world have their own animal god. Like, ooh. You know, like, it's just, it's annoying at this point. <laughs> like, I, I'm kind of sick of it. I'm sick of that, like, right. idea going around. Right, if nice that makes to sense. know that that's where you draw the line, Cal. Well, y you know, like, it's just, it's kind of cliche and it's uninteresting, and it's kind of like, it almost goes like, ooh, like, these these barbaric animals have their own animal god instead of our real gods, like, ooh, you know, like, I, I kind of don't like that in fantasy, just in general. I don't like when they do that. Anyways, so something um, else relevant, please. Oh, but I was gonna say that it could also be, like, a, uh, a person. Yeah. yeah, it could also be a person or, like, um... You know in Mulan how they have the guardians, I guess, and the guardians never are all ancestors. Mulan, okay, no. so in Mulan, Mushu is basically a gar supposed to be a guardian of Mulan's family, right? And all of the like, there's uh, like guardians and stuff, but there's also a shrine where she prays to her ancestors and stuff. So it'd be interesting if this is just, I don't want to say an ancestor, like not an ancestor of all the faunus, obviously, but this is a person that is so important in faunus history that they. Uh, feel like they need to pray to them for guidance. It'd be much interesting if it was a real, actual person. Mm -hmm. Um, 
yeah, ancestors not the right word, but I guess like some sort of guardian or some sort of figure that was a real person and they're asking them, almost like a saint, right? Yes. Like, um, Patron that would be, ha yeah, like having saints would be more interesting than having demigods because saints are real people, question mark, most of the time. Um, like as far as we know, like. I feel like you're, you've, you've moved off to a theology lesson. I, so I guess so. Let's bring um, it back around. You told me to get you to stop rambling. This I know, but this is, again, I want to make a bigger video on this because I feel like there's some interesting theological discussion, but I just wanted right. to kind of mention that. This is that already part. an hour long. It's a big enough video. Um, so a lot of people think that John is going somewhere because he wasn't in any of the fight scenes at the end. You have Nora and Ren fighting Hazel, so, you have Yang fighting Mercury, so you have all of the girls fighting Salem, for but this, John isn't here. So for this, um, in, if you look at the first, uh, if you look at volume four, we get Blake fighting uh, Adam, Adam in the desert. That doesn't happen. Yeah, so but I, it feel was, like I feel like it was kind of... Yeah, and so Jean so being I, not there is weird as maybe, a metaphor, even. Maybe, like, I know I it's know. not literal, but people, like, are still... I think, I think you're sense? just looking into things that may not really... Yeah, be. but all of them are there except Jean. Isn't that a little bit weird? Eh, I don't know. Isn't it, though? I mean, is Jean ever really that interesting to watch fight... No, Have but you ever like, been like, oh, John, that actor. Nora and Ren are in the scene together, and John isn't. So what's like, people are worried because I know what you mean. Like, they're not gonna li literally fight. Like, it's not like that. The scene where Salem is like giant, yes, and then the girls are looking up at her. Like, that's not literally gonna happen. But it's all a metaphor. And so, where the fuck is John? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, this is as interested as I like as I've been. This is ever as been. interested in John as I've ever been in my life. Like, that's basically it. So. Yeah, that's all I have to say. Um, I don't know how long this video was because we've been long, interrupted a couple times, and so the clips are all split. Uh, if you guys were wondering if we had any audio issues there, um, so yeah, that's basically it. I hope that you guys enjoyed, Hunter. If you have anything well, else I think, to say, well, I think I think we should end this like we end the other ones. Where what do what do you feel like it's going? Where what do you think is going to happen? Is that what next? we did? Yes. Next, um, definitely some Ozpin explanation. Yes. Weiss is probably gonna fight those things now. I feel like yes. we're not gonna see Blake and Yang for a little, a little bit. I feel like the next episode may be more centric on Ozpin explaining things and then also Weiss uh, helping out the airship it, people. Yeah. So I don't know where Blake and Yang fit in that. Oh, but Blake could be uh, kind of... They're all kind of starting riots. You know what yeah. I mean? They're all causing trouble and so I feel like that's kind of how their stories are connecting right now. And so, like, uh, Oscar is explaining, which is trouble I'm, in itself. I have a feeling Weiss that is causing trouble. Blake is causing trouble. My Yang big, is finding Raven. That is causing trouble. You my, know what I mean? My big uh, guess is that I I have a feeling that, like, the White Fang might have some sort of hostile takeover of, of menagerie. menagerie. I was thinking about that, yeah. and that worries me. Oh my god, I'd, I'd be all over that. But yeah, like, there's, I think there's lots of different things that they could do, but it's definitely all about the girls being troublemakers. Yes. <laughs> like, that's kind of the central they're theme that I think shop. is going. They're wrecking up shop. So maybe Weiss will be like, maybe Weiss will crash, and then... I don't think that they're gonna crash because Weiss is still in the airship. So I think what Weiss well, is gonna do is take over the airship. I have, I have a feeling that a crash may occur. I don't really know, but okay. you know, that's the guess. Because I feel like Weiss is going to be like, you've turned this son of a bitch back to, like, to those people to help them, or they're going to get attacked themselves because we see a picture of Weiss, and uh, she's throwing her night grim out the... Her night grim? Her night person out the window. Yes. Uh, and she's still standing so, uh, on cool. the boat with some whatever, gravity stuff. Whatever, however it's going to end, it's going to be a badass yeah. fight scene. Yeah, and so it, it's cool, man. It's just, I thought the girls were going to reunite this volume. They're probably going to either do it at midway or at the end, near and that kind of makes me sad. I think near the end. I know, it's been and, such a long time. And lastly, time. Uh, our, where is Neo 2017? Oh, Neo okay. is not is here. Is that what you wanted to say? Yes. Okay. This is, this is, this is how we're going to end oh, every single ne one. Neo's not here. Ne Neo's, Neo's still not here. Not here. What if she's with Raven? <laughs> what if she's with... That would be fucking What hilarious. if she's just in the background, too? Like, she doesn't uh, even have any lines? That would infuriate everyone. She could that hide, would drive... too. What if, what if Neo what was, What if like, Neo has been in every single scene and she's just in yeah, disguise? Yeah, she's just, like... Every, like, she's just stalking It's Ruby. like that poem where it's, like, and when you... Through the hardest times in your life, when you looked back and there was one foot set of footprints, Neo was carrying you. Oh, okay. A lot of people use that as, like, a Jesus analogy, but I feel I know, like that's we the talked joke. A, we've talked a lot about... It uh, is a Jesus analogy. I know. We've talked about religion a lot. You know who's better than Jesus? Who? Neo. Okay. And yes, I fucking said that. Fight me. Okay. Anyways. I, it, it's fine. It's okay. What if she was, like, the fairy girl? 
What fairy girl? The fa yeah. What fairy girl? From volume four. I don't fucking know. Anyways. What do you mean? What fairy? What the, are you talking about? Uh, the boat about? that Blake oh, was on. Oh, you mean the short-haired girl. Yeah. Anyways. That wasn't a fairy. Whatever. Uh, anyways, uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. Remember, you guys should join our Discord server if you enjoyed this video. Uh, and, uh, that's basically it. You should also become a Patreon if you can, but if you can't, it's okay. We'll forgive you. Uh, we won't. Kinda. If you I join won't. the Discord server, we'll forgive you. Anyway, guys, we'll see you later. Bye.